Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to this house. Today we are in the McKinley Heights Historic District of St. Louis, Missouri, exploring a Victorian era row home that was built in 1889. Now this house has some amazing details, even from the curb, there are some things to talk about. So of course, right now I am standing on the Sidewinder porch and it has a lot of its original wooden details and the original gingerbreading and fretwork. Now, as we look across the facade, there's some beautiful terracotta pieces up along the top of the cornice with a fleur-de-lis motif imprinted on these bricks. So let's just take a moment to appreciate this and then we're going to go inside and start exploring. And before we go inside, I want to take a moment to give a huge shout out to Jamie Winner of Remax Gold for allowing us to film here. Let's go check it out. Walking inside of this house, it is just absolutely amazing. So one of the first things that we really notice is all of the wood and the millwork. So of course, this front door here, it's unstained, it's very raw, it has a lot of natural texture to it. Of course, there's a giant window pane right here in the center and a letterbox down below. Now, if we look above the door, it has the original transom window, and we can see the original hardware that's been painted over underneath this very ornate woodwork. Now, something that's very curious is it does have a newer latch, so it does not have the original latch right here in the center that's been replaced. Now, as we start to glance around, one of the other things that really starts to catch our attention are these floors. So let's take a moment to really appreciate these. These are the original pine floors that were put into the house when it was constructed. So we can see the wood grain from these old growth trees really stretching across the floors and bringing in a lot of warmth into the space. Now, as we start to travel around the pool table here, we come to the double hung windows. Now, there is an amazing detail here in the center, this hand carved fluting that comes down between the windows. And below this is wainscoting decoratively done. And we'll see this again mimicked in the owner's suite directly above this. As we continue to travel around this room, we notice how the ceiling is wrapped with ornate crown molding. Of course, once again, original to the house, as well as oversized baseboards that run around. And this would have all been very true for this period and this location. Back when this house was originally built, this was known as the McKinley Fox District. Now, of course, it's called McKinley Heights today. And this would have been for upper middle class residents in this neighborhood. It was walking distance to Lafayette Square, to the shops and restaurants that were in Benton Park, in Benton Park West and Soulard. And of course today, it is still in one of those super prime locations where you're still walking distance to all of those neighborhoods and their amenities. So over the last 130 years or so, not much has changed as far as the quality of life in this neighborhood. Now, continuing around this room, we come to the fireplace. Now, this house was remodeled a little over 10 years ago, and this cast iron inset was brought back in by previous owners, and it is an antique. It is period accurate, but it is not actually original to this house. Now, before we move on to the dining room, I want us all to look up at the ceiling. We can see the original plaster medallion that's in the center, and this one is fairly ornate. It has kind of a Baroque look to it, from which a newer chandelier has been suspended. Now we'll go ahead and pass into what would have been the dining room. And of course, this is set up as a living room. So come on in here. And one of the first things that really catches our eye is a matching plaster medallion. And once again, this would have been very common for homes of this era to have the same plaster work throughout the house to create a sense of flow. Now, as we cross over here, we see a spot where there used to be a fireplace. And of course, back in this time, there was no such thing as central heating. Radiator heating was just being brought into homes, but for the most part, every room would have had a fireplace. So we can see the proof of that in this outcropping here. Now on either side of this are what could potentially be the original windows. So let's get a closer look at this wood here that's been painted over, as well as these ornate trim pieces around the windows. Now passing through the space, it is going to bring us to the newer kitchen. So we'll take a moment to see this real fast. So come on through here.
Of course, this kitchen is newer. It has modern cabinets. It has all granite countertops. Right here in the middle is a really massive island. So of course there's a seating area for two. And if we look below, and this just adds so much to the charm of the house, there are built-in wine racks down below here. So come on over here and there's a corner window I want to point out. Now, we can notice that it is asymmetrically framed as it dead ends into the wall, which once again would have been a period detail to just help to dress up an otherwise plain spot that was pretty much just for utilitarian purpose to allow more light and a breeze to come into the kitchen. So come on through here and there's another one of these original windows and we can see the original paneling as well. This one does not have any hardware on the bottom, but it does have what looks to be the original millwork that surrounds it. And then of course, as we're noticing in this kitchen, there are modern appliances and it's all been very tastefully blended into the house. There is another detail in this kitchen that has been paid the most exquisite amount of attention. Let's look at this over here. The side splash runs underneath the sill of the window. So we saw this recently in the Griesedick family house where the window was actually cut off to accommodate the countertop. But in this case, it was carefully planned to run underneath the sill. So that's just something that we can really appreciate from a preservationist perspective. Circulating now around the kitchen, we are going to come through a pass. And let's notice how much shorter this is than the other boxed archways that are here. So once again, I'm 6'2". This is probably seven feet tall now. So come on through here. Off to this side is a washer and dryer inside of a closet. And off to this side is a powder room. Now the powder room has beadboard surrounding it. It has a modern light fixture. It has a pedestal sink and it has a toilet. Now, of course, all of these elements are new from the restoration work that went into this house. And we can really appreciate that this bathroom wasn't just updated and modernized, but that attention was put into it to kind of bring this kind of charm back into the house so that it has some sort of a semblance of what would have originally been here. Now making our way through here, we're going to go all the way to the back of the house and there's a double set of doors over here. Now this is very curious. Maybe at one time it was a flat or as so many of these other houses, perhaps it was turned into a boarding house or some sort of apartments. I'm not really sure, but there are two separate doors here and what looks like there could have been space for a wall. So if anyone at home has any idea why there could be these two sets of doors here, please let me know down in the comments. I'm very curious. Now, before we go to the backyard, we're going to go finish exploring the rest of the house. So come on up here. As we make our way up the stairs, we notice that the ceiling above us starts to slope with the pitch of the steps. And then a handrail emerges on the side of the wall. Now, this is really gorgeous. Of course, the pine is catching all of the natural light coming in from the windows, both behind me and ahead of me. And this millwork that runs down the stairs is just gorgeous. Now, it meets up a little differently than some of the millwork that we've been seeing from this period. If you come look at this detail here, it wraps around on three sides and then comes to a very natural stop and sits on top of the rise of the steps here. As we arrive up here at the top of the stairs, this landing is now L-shaped. It's going to shoot off that way and then it's going to continue forward. First, we're going to go this way. So come follow me here. We come to bedroom number one and this room is really spacious. Once again, we can see the original windows with the fluting on the millwork. And let's just take a moment to pan around the space. Making our way out of this bedroom, we're now going to pass by the bathroom, which is recessed into this nook of the house. So come on through here. Now, something really interesting before we even get to the bathroom is the storage. So we can notice how wide and how deep this little entrance area is between the walls. Now, there's a built-in cabinet here, so come take a look at this. Now in this bathroom, of course, it has been updated a little bit. There's a newer pedestal sink and toilet, and there's this vintage clawfoot tub shower combo. And we can actually see the shower curtain rack that goes above the beadboard. Now on the floors are these beautiful hexagon tiles. And over in the corner of the bathroom is another one of these windows. And this lines up with the thin window that we saw down in the kitchen below. 
Before we leave this bathroom, there's another detail up above here, and this does appear to have its original hardware on this cabinet above the door. And that's just something that we can really appreciate as still existing in this bathroom. Now passing out of the bathroom, we're coming back into the stair hall and we're going to around this corner. And this is going to take us to bedroom number two. Now we passed through these double French doors under this flat archway. And this room probably would have originally been a nursery or a library or had some sort of a purpose like that. And the reason that we can guess at this is because of the double doors here in this wider arch, that this most likely was not a bedroom. We also don't really see anywhere that there could have been a fireplace originally. Now there are some really interesting features. So there's a double closet right here and it has the original millwork around it. Now we're going to see the final bedroom and let's go to the end of this hallway where we're now going to terminate in the owner's suite. So off to this side is the closet and there is a pocket door here and that's just amazing. Of course, this is newer, but it still blends in with the original millwork and we can just take a peek in here because this is actually pretty large for a house of this period. Moving on, we now are released into a much larger space. So we can see immediately these double hung windows are directly lined up with the windows that we first saw in the parlor whenever we entered the house. Once again, they have the fluting details that run down the middle to break up the two windows and then the wainscoting below with the ornate and decorative wood trim. And off to this side is an old mantle. And I'm not sure if this is original or if it was brought back into the house, but either way, it just adds so much charm to the space. As we can see that there used to be a fireplace in this spot at one point. As we pass across the room, over in this corner is the owner's bathroom. So let's go ahead and peek on in here. Now immediately facing us as we enter this room is this double vanity with these beautiful new countertops, new cabinets, a large mirror that extends the width of this niche. And we also have a giant shower over in this corner of the bathroom. And now that we've seen the entire house, let's go check out the backyard. Now, as we pass out the back door, and this is the door that we saw just on the other side of the stairs before we went up, we now come to a deck area, and this takes us down some steps into the yard. So first off to this side is a pergola, and it has old grapevines that are growing over the entire thing. And underneath it is a jacuzzi hot tub. So you could imagine just sitting out here and enjoying the best of city life. Now, as we continue down this brick path, this will eventually take us to the detached garage, but there's also a brick paved area with a bistro table and chiminea set up. And now if we turn around and look at the rest of the yard, this is actually really expansive. This is a giant double lot. And this is kind of rare to find in this area to have so much green space. And we've seen other homes from this general area within about a half mile of here, and none of their yards have been this massive. Before we leave the backyard, if we look up at the back of the house, it has both the cast iron stars and the cast iron diamonds. And this really tells us how this house was built. So this would have been built with three layers of brick that were all tied together by long iron rods, as was the fire code around the 1890 time period. So it's just really interesting that this still has those features and that they're still intact and still holding the structure together 130 years later. I really hope that you all enjoyed this tour. Please let me know which part of this house was your favorite down in the comments below. I'll see you next time on This House.